In this video, I want to introduce a concept in programming called conditionals. So you can think of conditionals as a way for us to embed uh, decision points in our code. You can also think of them as like flowcharts that we'll be able to create in our code. In this video, I want to dig into the basic syntax of something called if statements, and we'll build a really simple um, set of examples. We'll do like a clothing recommendation based on the weather kind of conditional. And then in the next video, we'll actually combine this with our knowledge of classes and we'll build a more full uh, featured application, a dice game using this conditional knowledge. So let's start with what we had in um, the trivia game where we have something that we're going to present to the user, a question. Uh, I think one of them was, what is the national animal of Scotland? And let's say that we've got two answers that are possible in our application, unicorn or dragon. So with flowchart logic, we will put our questions, our sort of like decision points into a box. And then off of that, we will have arrows for the different branches from that decision point. So we may have one branch if the user answers unicorn and another branch if they answer dragon. And we can have as many branches as we want off of this. I'm gonna keep it simple to start with and just have this unicorn dragon. So it's gonna be either of these. So then what we're gonna do is draw another box here and another box here. And as we learned last time, the unicorn is the national animal of Scotland. So if the user chose that, we would end up displaying some kind of like correct message. And if they chose dragon, we would display some kind of wrong message. So this is the logic that we're gonna start off implementing. We're gonna ask a question, and then we're gonna have branching logic that checks whether or not the user got that right, and then displays some um, feedback about how they did. And this process of creating a flowchart is a planning tool that you can use when you are working on the branching logic of your applications. So we used UML to plan out the structure, the sort of object-oriented structure of our application. And when it gets into the details of um, the sort of decision points, branching logic, we can use flowcharts to map that out before we get into code. So let's flip over to code here. I've got a blank Visual Studio project open. Let's do a little bit of setup here to get started. So we're going to violate our rule of trying to keep things out of the main function just because we're doing a really simple demo this time. So what I'm going to do is up at the top, bring in the system console class so that we can shorten up some of the code we're going to write in here. And let's make sure that we keep our console window open. Press any key to exit and read key to keep the console window open until a key is pressed. So we should have something basic that we can see. Great. Let's uh, also change the color here. So let's change the background color to be uh, dark magenta. And we'll change the foreground color to be white. We'll change the title to be conditional demo and instead of printing out hello world let's say here's a trivia question for you
There we go. And um, I want this background color to cover all of the screen. So what I'm just going to do is make sure that after I set the background color, I clear, which has that side effect of painting all of the screen in that background color. And one little compatibility note is that this doesn't, um, as the at the time of recording, doesn't work on Macs. So if you do this and you're following along on a Mac in Visual Studio, you won't see the background color paint across all of the screen here. Okay, enough setup. We've, we've got the scaffold here of our application. And so what I want to do is, let's add a to-do note, learn about conditionals through trivia. And then we'll have another part of our application down here, learn about conditionals through clothing recommendations. So we had this logic where we want to present a question, we want to get their response to that question, and then we want to check, hey, was that right or was that wrong? So let's start off simply. We'll do some stuff that we've done before. Let me move that comment up slightly. We learned in the trivia application how to present a question so we can say something like, what is the national animal of Scotland, unicorn, or dragon. And we learned that we could read in the response. So I could create a variable called trivia response and use read line to read in everything that user the user types until they hit the enter or return key. And let's just make sure that this is working. So let's print out their response. It's always good to make sure that as you're learning um, programming, especially you do these small chunks, you test them, make sure that they're working. So we should see our question show up here and then I could answer something and see it printed back. Good. So let's add our conditional logic here. So I'm creating what's called an if statement where we put our branching logic, our sort of question here into parentheses after the keyword if. So we're saying if the response is exactly equal to unicorn, all lowercase, then we can print out correct. And we can print out some more information um, like the origin. So this originates from Celtic mythology. So let's test this out. We'll try running it twice. Once where we type in unicorn and once where we don't type in unicorn. So let's try unicorn. It says correct. It originates from Celtic mythology. And let's try it again. Let's type in dragon this time and nothing prints out. It just says press any key to exit. So we've got our first branching, uh, our first piece of branching logic here. So I think it would be useful to go ahead and grab this and diagram it on the whiteboard. So there are a couple pieces to this. We have our keyword if that we're using now. Then we have parentheses and into the parentheses we have what is called a Boolean expression. And for review, Boolean is a value so we can create variables that are Booleans. A Boolean value is either true or false. 
So what an if statement needs is something that turns into a true or false value here. And this equality operator, the two equal signs, allows us to generate a true false value um, by comparing these two things. So if our variable trivia response is unicorn, this turns into true. If our trivia response is anything other than unicorn, uh, this turns into false. Then we have a code block. So if our Boolean expression is true, then everything in this code block executes. And we can have as many lines of code in here as we want. I've got two, but you could have 20, you could have 50. Um, at a certain point, you'd want to kind of like restructure that. But conceptually, the idea is that as long as this condition is met, all of this code runs. And if it's not met, none of this code runs. So we've got one branch of our flowchart implemented here. We've got this if unicorn, um, then correct. We want to get this other branch, if dragon, then wrong, into our code. And there are a couple ways to do this. So let's flip back to the code to see that. So one way we could do this is we could just replicate our logic that we did before. Um, if the response is dragon, then do something else. But there's a better way to do this. When we create these two separate if statements, they are evaluated separately. What we can do is join these two together and use an else clause here. So now we have a set of branching logic here where either this chunk is going to execute or this chunk is going to execute. So if we're not in that correct branch, then we can print out wrong. And um, if they put in dragon, we could say, you know, but that would be cool though. So let's test this out. Let's try putting in dragon. Wrong, but that would be cool though. Let's try putting in unicorn to make sure that that still works. Correct. And the nice thing about our else statement here is that it handles every other situation. So if we came to this question and instead of typing in unicorn or dragon, we put in cat, uh, it's still going to be caught by that else statement. So we can say else captures all other conditions. And let me grab a screenshot of this and put it into our whiteboard. And we'll bring it up here next to our flow chart. So this flowchart that we've got is really similar to this code. So we have one branch for unicorn that's captured by this if, and then we have an else that captures all other things that could be typed in here. And let, actually, let me move this around. So we'll take our first chunk of code that we wrote, put it here, and we'll grab the second chunk and put it here. So now what I want to do is think about maybe a question that has more than two outcomes. So our trivia question, because we were saying um, that there is one right answer to this trivia question, it's basically either you got it right or you got it wrong. But we could do something um, like, a, let's say we, we're getting ready for the day and we want to figure out what we should wear uh, based on the temperature. So we could have a branching logic. So I'm going to create a flowchart here. What is the temp 
today. And uh, I'm gonna use Fahrenheit here. So forgive me if you <laughs> use Celsius. My brain does not know the reference points for Celsius. So with this application, we'll ask the user what the weather is, what the temp is, and then we can have multiple branches off of this. So we could have one for when the temperature is below zero. Um, I'm gonna represent this with um, operators that we will learn in a second. So if the temperature is less than or equal to zero, we'll tell them uh, don't go outside. We can have a branch for if the temperature is less than or equal to 32 degrees. Let's have one for if it's less than or equal to 65 degrees. And let's do one if it's less than or equal to 100 degrees. So less than 32 degrees, maybe we'll, we'll tell them to bundle up. Less than 65 degrees, uh, maybe that's sweater weather. Uh, and less than 100 degrees, maybe that's shorts weather. And this isn't going to be pretty, but let's do one more that would be greater than 100 degrees that does a similar don't go outside. And I should make it clear that when we're doing this like less than um, zero here and less than 32. What I mean for this to be is um, this is greater than zero and 32. So another way I could write this would be zero or one to 32. And this would be 33 to 65. And this would be 66 to uh, 100 here, and this would be greater than 100. And I'm going to use integers here for my temperatures. Um, if I were using doubles or floats here, I would need to be a little bit more specific with these ranges. But since we're, we'll just deal with whole numbers to make our lives easier here. So even though this isn't the most beautiful flowchart, you can definitely see that this has a lot more branches than our trivia application where it's just correct or incorrect. So here we're going to need one, two, three, four, five different branches based on whatever the input is for the temperature. And we're going to have to learn a couple of new concepts as we go. So I'm going to introduce a few concepts like what these operators are, how we can do these number comparisons. And then we will talk about how to read in an integer. So let the user type in an integer, and then we'll be able to build all of this logic out. So let's flip back to the code here. And for the purposes of testing this, I don't want our trivia question to show up. So I'm just gonna select all of this and comment it out. And we can now down here do something like right line weather so print out a little title. Oh, we already used oh no, that's fine. We'll do this and then we will start demoing some of our concepts. So the first thing we want to talk about are operators. Then we'll talk about 
integer input, and then we'll do our branching logic. Okay, so first thing up, operators. We've seen them before, like when we do 10 plus two, that's the mathematical addition operator that allows us to take two numbers and add them together. We have seen concatenation, where you can take two strings and add them together. And we just saw a new one up here, the equality operator, which allows us to take two things and compare them. There are a series of operators that give us back a Boolean value. So those are useful to know when we're heading into this world of branching decisions. So let's start off with a variable here, temp, for temperature. And we'll say that it's, it's zero degrees Fahrenheit. Right line is the temp zero. So here's that equality operator. We're just being, we're able to ask, is this value di directly equal to this value? So when we run it right now, we should see, yes, the temperature is zero. So true, that's what we're getting back when we evaluate that expression. If I change the temperature to one and run it again, we should now see false because the temperature is no longer zero. And let's add this so it'll make it easier to read later. The current temp is, and we'll put our temp in there, Fahrenheit. OK, so this is the equality operator. Let me duplicate that and show you the inequality operator. So we can take two values and ask if they are not equal to one another. So is the temp anything but zero? So if I run it right now, um, the temperature is one. So this will print out false. But this should print out true because the temperature is not zero. One F, zero. Anything but zero is true. So now we have a couple of comparison operators that I want to introduce. So comparison operators, and I'll put them in a comment here. We have less than, we have greater than, we have less than equal, and we have greater than equal. So let me grab one of these lines of code to use as a template. So we can say, is the temp less than? than 32 and the way that we would express that here is say temp less than 32 and let's say less than I'll, I'll put notes next to each of these to explain what the operator is so one here is less than 32 so this should print out true temp less than 32 true If I put the temperature at 32, this will print out false because 32 is not less than 32. So false, they're not, uh, 32 is not less than 32. So let me show you less than or equal. So this operation checks whether the number is less than 32 or if it's equal to 32. So now, since our temp is 32, this should be true because the temperature is 32. And this should be false because the temperature is not less than 32. False, true. Okay, last two that I want to introduce here are the greater than and greater 
than or equal. So let's say, is the temp greater than 65? And we'll do greater than or equal to 65. So if we set our temperature to something like 100, this should be true and this should be true because our temperature is greater than 65. And these two should be false because our temperature is no longer less than 32. So let's check that out. So these are both false. It's not less than 32. It's not less than or equal to 32. It is greater than 65 and it is greater than or equal to 65. And same deal with our less than versus less than equal. If I put in the number 65, uh, 65 is not greater than 65. So this will be false, but it is greater than or equal to 65. So we should see false and then true. So is 65 greater than 65? Nope. Is it greater than or equal to 65? True. So now we have built up a set of new operators that we can use in our conditions. So instead of just having to say whether two things are exactly equal, we can use any of these operators to generate a true or false value. So any of these are a Boolean expression that we can use inside of our if clause. And if we flip, flip back to our less than perfect uh, flowchart here, we can see I was using those here. So we, we saw less than or equal to zero, less than or equal to 32, less than or equal to 65, greater than 100. These are not the only operators that you will use when you're building your conditional logic, but these are the basics that will help us get started and we'll introduce new ones as we go. Okay, so let's do our integer inputs here. So just to speed up our development process here, we're going to build some logic where we have different outcomes based on the temperature variable, and I don't want to have to keep editing this number. What I would prefer to do is be able to type it in when the application loads and then use that for our branching logic. So let's comment out all of this. This is here for reference so that we understand those operators. And let's look at um, getting an integer from the user. So we can say, what is the temp in Fahrenheit today? Now, when we get our input from the user, like we did up here with readline, you saw that we were getting a string back. So anytime we're reading something from the console, we are going to get a string. And we can't use a string in our comparison operator against a number. So we can't say, like, is the temperature response less than uh, what was our first one here? Less than or equal to zero. If we hover over this, it's telling us that this operator can't be applied to string and integer. So we could apply it uh, to integer and integer, but that means that we have to go from a string, something that the user typed in, to an integer. And we'll see this in more detail when we get to the shop application. But I want to give you um, a brief introduction to it. So let's create a new variable, integer temp. In C Sharp, we have a convert class. And that class has methods that allow us to take strings and convert them to integers, or strings and convert them to double, uh, or convert a Boolean to a number. So this convert class allows you to move from one type to another. We're primarily going to be using it 
um, to go from string inputs to numbers. And the two things that you want to keep in mind, 2int32 allows us to take a string and uh, return an integer. But there is also 2double, which we will use anytime we want to capture something that is a double value. In this case, uh, to simplify things, we're going with whole numbers. So I'm going to make sure to just use 2int32, but I'll add a comment. You can also use convert to double for doubles. OK, so now we have an integer value that we can compare against another integer value. To test out this process, let's print out the temperature. So we can say something like, hmm, it's temp Fahrenheit outside. And then after we print this out, we'll do our kind of branching logic. So let's just make sure that we actually have a temp variable with whatever the user types in. So what is the temp? We type in 32. Hmm, it's 32 outside. So it looks like it's working. One thing that we're not going to talk about in this video, we'll, we'll talk about in later videos, is what happens if someone types in something that is not a number. Just mash on the keyboard. Our application crashes. So it's telling us the input string was not in a correct format when it tried to convert from a string to an integer. So let's go ahead and kill this. Oops, got to kill it over here. And what happens if they type in a number that's huge? Because remember, integer has a range from negative 2 billion to positive 2 billion. So if I type in something greater than that, um, oops, forgot to hit enter here. It also crashes to tell us that that was too big or too small for an integer um, of 32 bytes. So in future videos, we will learn how to handle those exceptions gracefully. But for now, I'm just going to add a note, note, convert may crash our app if the user types in something that isn't a number or that is too big, small for an int variable. We're not worried about that yet. OK, so let's go ahead. Whoops, I just meant to copy this and paste it down here. So now, with those concepts, the operator, the integer input, we can work on our branching logic. So let's start off with the first branch, which is less than or equal to 0. We want to print don't go outside. So this should be easy. We did something similar to this already with an if statement, and we're just using our new comparison operator. So we can print out, you know, do not go outside. It is not worth it. So we got one branch done. Let's test it. So we're going to try running it with something that meets this condition. So we, we could type in like negative 32. And then we can try it again with something that doesn't meet this condition to make sure that this doesn't print out. So let's try negative 32. Don't go outside. And let's try something like 100 degrees. No recommendation prints out. So it looks like it's working. So now we can start working on our next branch here. And with our code that we wrote before, we had this option of doing if else to capture one of two alternatives. In our code, 
we can add another branch here with else if. So this allows us to specify another condition. So either this condition will be met, temperature is less than zero, or um, this condition will be checked and we'll see if this is met. So let's do temp less than or equal to 32. And we said something like bundle up. So let's try it now with something that's between zero and 32 to get this bundle up to show up. So if I put in 20, it tells us to bundle up. And let's add some space here and maybe some space here to our application so it's a little bit more legible. So this looks like it's working. And let's see what happens if we do that 100 degrees. Nothing prints out for the recommendation. So our else if is different from our else. So our else that we wrote up here captured all other conditions that our, our previous statements didn't capture. The else if allows us to say anything. So if this wasn't met, then we'll do another comparison and check whether this condition is met. So we can keep using that to build out the rest of our branches here. So we can build out a branch for the sweater weather and a branch for shorts weather. And then this last one, we can actually use an else to capture. So let's map that out. Else if the temp is less than or equal to 65, we will print out probably time to bring a sweater. Else if the temp is less than or equal to 100, do some sort of celebration that it's shorts weather. right line that is way too hot do not go outside without a spacesuit so this logic captures what we had in our flow chart Let's see if i can bring them side by side So if our temp is less than or equal to zero, don't go outside. If it is um, not less than or equal to zero, but it is less than or equal to 32. So when we get down to this else if, we know that this one has not been matched yet. So that gives us the range from one degree to 32 degrees. Bundle up. If this is not matched, then we go down to the next one. So we know that the temperature has to at least be greater than 32. So if this one is matched, we are at that range from 33 to 65. If this one's not matched, we go on to the next one. Um, so this one will end up down here if the temperature is not less than or equal to 65, but it is less than or equal to 100. So that gives us that range of 66 to 100. And it looks like I'm missing a zero here that should have said 100. And then this else here is going to be for every other situation. So if none of these were matched, we know that our temperature must be greater than 100, which matches what we put in our flowchart here. So let's try running this again. Let's do a couple of tests. So let's do something like 1,000 degrees. It's way too hot. Don't go outside without a spacesuit. Let's try something in the middle, like maybe we'll do 60 degrees and hopefully see sweater weather. Bring a sweater. Good. Uh, and let's do one more. Let's test this temp. So let's say it's um, exactly 100 degrees. We should see shorts weather. Shorts weather. 
Okay, so what I did there was I tested each of these new conditions that we added. When you're writing your conditional logic, your branching logic, you do want to be sure that you have all of these tested. Um, and we tested these before, so we are pretty confident that all of these branches are currently working. Let's take a screenshot and bring this over to the whiteboard. fix this typo this should have been 100 um, and the way that our branching logic works with this if else if else if else structure is that the code is going to consider all of this as one chunk so only one of these possible branches will execute so only one branch So the way that it works is that this first if will be checked. And if that's not matched, it'll go on to the next one. If that's not matched, it'll go on to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. And it's going to stop at the first condition that it finds that matches, and it'll execute that branch. So if we're printing out, um, if our temp is 65 and it's sweater weather, this prints out and none of these other branches uh, are executed. So it's only this one that executes. And with our else if, we can have as many as we want in there. So else if as many as you like. So however many branches we have, we can have that many else ifs in here. So kind of the structure of your if statements is that they are, I'm going to do this on the other side, they're always going to start with an if then you can have else if and these are optional but you can have as many as you want and then you can end with an else. And we saw that that was optional. We were able to write if statements that didn't need the else when we started off with our trivia. So you're always going to start with an if. You can have as many else ifs as you want. And then it will end with an else. But that is also optional. So let's see a couple of ways that this logic, we, we could have done it wrong. So if I flip back here, let's say that we weren't thinking and we decided to make, let's just get rid of this. Oh no, I'll leave that. Uh, we decided to make all of these if statements instead of else if statements. So we will put in a temperature of let's say 100 and see what happens. Oh, actually, no. Let's put in a temperature of negative 10, and we'll see what happens. Don't go outside. <laughs> Bundle up. Probably time to bring a sweater. Woohoo, shorts weather. So what happened here? Um, like we saw with our whiteboard, that when we have if, else if, else if, else if, else, all of these are linked so that only one of these branches can possibly execute. When we have if next to if, these are completely separate. So it's going to check this one first. Is negative 10 less than zero, uh, less than or equal to zero? True. So it'll print this out. And then this separate branching logic here, it's going to say is negative 10 less than 32? Okay, bundle up. And then a separate chunk here for negative 65. And then one more chunk here for this if else. So the key takeaway there is you want to make sure that if you have branching logic where only one thing is supposed to happen, that those are all linked together as one chunk 
using your if, else if, else kind of structure. The other way that this can go wrong with the current way that we've structured it is that the order matters. This cascading where it starts at the top and goes down to the next one. If we don't think carefully about the order that we put things, we can get weird things printing out. So if I switch these up, so let's say I started off with zero, I do my sweater weather check, and then I do my 32 degree bundle up check. If I hit play here, and let's say our weather should be bundle up, so we'll do 32. Probably time to bring a sweater. So this is that implication of the this cascading structure where it's going down through our conditional logic and, and trying to find the first branch that matches. So this one, we put in um, 32, so this one doesn't match. We get down to this next one, 32 is less than 65, so it thinks that this is the right branching decision and it won't uh, execute any of the other ones. So when we're trying to um, do this kind of check to make sure that our, our temp is within a range, we often will want to order our conditions in ascending order or descending order so that we can make sure that we don't have anything that is jumping out of the order here and messing up our branching logic. So if I flip this back, we have our conditions in ascending order, which means that when we get to this, if um, this condition isn't met, then we know that our temperature must be at least one degree. So then when we check this, we know, oh yeah, okay, it's, it's between one and 32 if this executes. So the, this structure, you know, may seem simple at first, but it's important to think about how this code is executing, um, like how it's flowing through the order of your branching decision points to try to make sure that you're writing code without any hidden bugs in it. So let's do one more thing here. What I want to do is show you what a nested uh, conditional looks like. So let's say our application starts up and we want to Let's do this here, or we, we can do it here. Nested conditional. Let's say when our application starts up, we want to say, hey, do you, do you want to um, get a clothing recommendation? And if they say yes, then we will go ahead and do our clothing recommendation logic. And if they say no, then we'll just exit the application. So right line, would you like a clothing recommendation today? We'll get our yes, no response here using read line. And then if our yes, no response is equal to yes, then we can go ahead and do everything that's here. And actually, let's improve this. Let's let the user know that we're looking for yes, no. And if they say no, we can say something like, OK, see you next time. So for our, our yes, no response, what we want to do is execute all of this code with our branching logic. So get the, the temperature input and do our if, else, if, else, if, else, if, else. So I'm going to grab all of this. I'm going to cut it. And then I'm going to scroll up and put that inside of my block here for my if. And if I run this, we can see our question. If I type in no, okay, see you next time, press any key to exit. And if I type in yes, what is the temp today? 32, 
bundle up, press any key to exit. So with our if statements, our conditional logic, we are able to nest them so that we can create more complicated flowcharts. And if we go back to our flowchart, let's see, do I have enough room here? No, let's make a little bit more room. What we did was add another branch here. So we said, whoops. Would you like a recommendation? Yes. No. So with our nested conditionals, we are able to express more, complica more complicated um, sequences of decisions. So you can imagine that this is like the basic ingredient that we would need to make a uh, choose your own adventure game where we present one decision, um, like which Pokemon do you want to start the game with? And there are three options. And then if you pick one of them, you've got additional decisions that fall out from it. Okay, so flipping back to our code here, we have, um, we learned our basics in the context of a trivia application, the if and then the if else structure, we learn some operators and how to read an input and do nested conditionals. We're going to take this forward into the next video where we will use this logic, but we're going to bring in classes and we'll learn about random to create a dice guessing game.